Oh, g'day, mate. This is my opportunity to explain to you the most important Aussie word of them all, mate. Now, mateship is something that's very important to us Aussies, and every dinkum Aussie uses the word mate every day of their life. So what is it that mate means exactly? And when should it be used? Well, first of all, mate, you should know that mate can be used in almost any sentence. This doesn't mean it has no meaning, though. And nor does it just mean friend. You've got to work out exactly what it means from the context and the tone in which it's used. For example, mate, as you would expect, mate can be used as part of a greeting. G'day, mate, for example, is common amongst blokes. They mightn't even be mates. You could say that to the bloke down at the servo. You might also say, how are you, mate? The answer to which would be, good thanks, mate, how are you? Note here, mate, that ya is used in the question and you is used in the response. That's just the way it is, mate. Ah, oh, mate. Oh, g'day, mate. G'day, champ. Mate, you'll have to excuse me two little friends here. They're bonding after Jono's little tour into the outback to discover his dinky die identity. Bloody oath we are. Mate can also be used in other everyday language. For example, I might say, Oi, mate, to get someone's attention. They don't have to be your mate either. Or I could say, what do you want for tea, mate? It's a bit difficult to know when you can put mate into a sentence and where you need to put it when you can use it. Also, mate, I generally wouldn't use the word mate two sentences in a row. It just wouldn't sound right. The differences are subtle, mate, and you need to learn over time through observation. Patience, my little matey. Incidentally, mate, matey is used when being affectionate and is often used when addressing a girl you're fond of, or by girls when talking between themselves. Oh, that's real bonzo, Brucey. I can't imagine feeling more dinky to eye than that. I think I'll go to sleep just thinking about the authentic gravelly sound of your Aussie voice. Oh, no worries, matey. I hope you took your mind off the Noah's Ark and helped you find your dinky die identity. So, mate, why don't you watch a few flashbacks of Jono and I interacting, and pay careful attention to the way mate is being used. Oh, mate, I'm with you on that one. Mate, what are you doing in that chair? Isn't it for the pool? Mate, that's the problem with you. You don't think laterally. See, I could either be standing up with you, busting my boiler, or I could be lying down here in the pool chair. Now, if I get hot, you could just carry me over to the pool and chuck me in. Mate, you know me. I'm not fond of hard yakka. Come on, mate. You bloody owe me after I shouted you to all that tucker and grog at that bloody bar with the other RV. Right out, mate. I'll grab the ute and I'll be over in a sec. Make sure you grab your togs. Oh, good on you, mate. You're not a bad bloke after all. Will there be any jellyfish at the beach? I don't know, mate. Why? It's just that that bloke carked it the other week after getting stung by a jellyfish. Mate, that was in North Queensland. None of the jellyfish can kill you down here. Although those blue bottles might hurt like buggery. Suppose. You can do with another cold beer, though. Crikey, mate. You can have a cold beer when we get out. There's plenty of a cold beer. And that's all part of it, mate. All that cash means nothing if you can't enjoy the simple Aussie pleasures of outdoor living, beautiful beaches, good mates, cold beers, and friendly Sheilas. Mate, did you hear about the time that Looney drank 99 stubbies on a flight from Hobart to Launceston? Oh, fair dinkum. Fair dinkum. Oh, crikey. You right, mate? Jeez, they're good-looking bastards, aren't they? Anyway, mate, not only can mate be used when you're not speaking to a mate, it can also be used when you're speaking to someone who certainly isn't your mate, or someone you're not happy with. Check Jules out for an example of this aggressive use of the word mate. Mate, what the bloody hell are you on about? You'll be on a bloody sticky wicket yourself if you keep up those shenanigans and no bloody beer. Now, how the hell are we going with the palms? What did you bloody call me? A bloody garbo? And what did you want? A bludger of pikers? Mate, have you been on the turps? That doesn't make any bloody sense. And I'm not a bloody garbo. Do I stink or something? Think harder. What is it you want, matey? What was that? A bloody dob artist? What are you bloody well talking about? I didn't dob on anyone. And a carton of snags? Mate, you're a couple of snags short of a barbie by the sounds of it. We're not a bloody butcher, we're a bottle-o. 
Now what do you want? By crikey, you're an absolute shocker, Bruce. Mate, you and I'll end up going the knuckle if you keep up that nonsense. Mate, I'll let this one pass, but if it was any other bloke, I'd knock their block off. I heard that, Bruce. And mate, sorry to be the one to tell you this, but you've got a body like a burst sausage and a head like a half-sucked mango. Mate, you don't have Buckley's. Feisty little character, isn't she? Mate, mate can also be used in a pleading sort of way. Like, mate, come on mate, you bloody piker. Can even be used as a greeting between good mates. In which case we'd just say, mate. What are you drinking, mate? My share. Oh, uh, just a water, mate. I'm as fist as a fart. Oh, come on, mate. No, uh, no, mate. I'm as full as a gook. Mate. Sorry, mate. I'm, I'm as pissed as a new. Mate, don't park on me. Mate, I'm absolutely paral paralytic. Oh, you bloody piker. I, I, I told you, I'm blotto. Off me tree. Absolutely muted. Oh, mate, no, mate, what's bloody wrong with you? You're sounding like a bloody person who doesn't have a drink with his mate. Oh, well, mate, if you put it like that, I can't let a mate down now, I suppose. Oh, good on you, champ. That's the Anzac spirit shining through all right. So, mate, that's the way mate is used. But does it have a deeper meaning? Any cultural meaning? Well, mate, one thing you need to know about Australian history is that it's a very masculine one. Initially, mate, there were basically no women, or Sheila's as they were known. Men outnumbered women at least two to one till the latter half of the 19th century. The second thing you need to know, mate, is that life was bloody, bloody hard. It's true that Australia was a convict colony, and the good old Poms from Pommyland continued to send convicts out here till the 1850s. And life was hard, mate. A lot of blokes killed themselves rather than be tormented by their pommy overlords. And what's more, old Oz was a long way from the comforts of the mother country and had none of its pleasures. It was a tough, unforgiving land, and the blokes were stuck out here by themselves trying to make a go of it. So what was the effect? Well, basically, mate, it meant that blokes had to depend on and look after each other, their mates, if they were to survive. This mateship was very important. If your mate was hungry, you gave him some of your tucker. If he was off his face, you made sure he was okay. If he was in a blue, you stood up for him. My oath you did, mate. You looked after your mate, and he in turn looked after you. Women, unfortunately for them, weren't really part of this masculine culture of mateship. They just weren't there. Elements of this survives today, mate. Although thankfully there are more women about. But most blokes won't call a woman mate to a face, although he will say, we're just mates. It was into this masculine colonial mateship that our diggers from World War I were born. They were larrikins, the lot of them, and they were sent off into the hell hole that was the Great War. 60,000 of them died, mate, which per capita was more than any other country on the planet, as Oz only had about 4 million people at the time. You can imagine, mate, that in that terrible, terrible adversity, mateship was needed more than ever. And so it was strengthened by the Anzac spirit, and again in World War Two and other wars, into what it is today. Come off it, Brucey. You bloody owe me after dragging me down to the beach that day. You're me mate, and if I'm going to discover me dinky die identity, then I may as well be doing it with me fair dinkum cobber. I'm not going to be drinking with the flies on me Pat Malone. Okay, mate. If it's important to you that your fair income cobber goes walkabout with you in the outback, so you're not your Pat Malone drinking with the flies while you discover your dinky die identity in case you cark it as a young bloke, then okay. I won't pike on you, mate. Not in your hour of need. Cheers, Brucey. Jono, you poor bastard. The shark's eating your bloody arm. Mate, don't worry, mate. I'll get some help. Bloody oath you'll get some help, mate. Me arm's been munched off. Mate, me arm! Brucey, you gotta help me. Oh, don't worry, mate. I'm your mate. I'll look after you, mate. That's what mates do. Here, mate. Have this icy amber nectar. That'll make you feel better. Not that hand, mate. Oh, sorry about that, mate. You may not know it, mate, but Australia lost more men per capita than any other nation during the Great War. 
any other nation in this world, mate. It's no wonder that those 100,000 dead Anzacs, 100,000 helped forge our national identity, those larrikins, refused to salute the Pommy officers they did. Bless them all. Anyway, mate, today's the day on the anniversary of that terrible landing that we remember our lost mates and their sacrifices over a beer or two. The whole nation remembers, mate, and you should too. To me lost mates who died to protect Australia and its way of life, I'll never forget you blokes. May you rest in peace. And so mateship remains a core part of Aussie male culture. You stick by your mate through thick and thin, no matter what. Your mates are often the most important part of your life. And, as a dinkum Aussie, you use the word mate every day of your life. Such is our heritage. Cheers, mate.